Hi, I wanted to take you through this form right now, which I'm accessing as an end user. So this video is going to be called an end user experience workflow video. So right now I'm a client, I'm a customer, and I'm accessing the interfacing website. This form is localized on that website. We've set it up externally. So as you can see, here's my title, the date of my application, applicant information. So here as a customer, I'm going to select the criteria to which accreditation that I'm seeking. I'm going to attach a copy of my documents here and pressing add. I'm going to find my documents, locate them, and then add them on. I'm going to select a specific type. So these are types that accord to my accreditation. I'm going to give myself a name. So the name will be interfacing. Commercial name will be interfacing. So I'm entering this form now just as a client, entering in all my personal information. So my address, I'll say 460. My self mailing address. So something that's great about these forms is that if there is a specific field that you would like to make mandatory, you can do so, so that the user can't submit the form without having filled that field. It kind of gives you an assurance that all the fields that need to be filled out are. So for example, usually like an, an address field will be mandatory, a telephone number, an official email address, which I'll give in. What's nice also is that we've hooked up this country and state province field right now. So as you can see, there's a rule placed that whatever country I select, I'm going to get the states or provinces according to my initial selection. So it filters a step down after filtering through the countries. I'll enter in my city. So something interesting too that we've added is we have the possibility of entering in just this little information box that you see here and it grants the user the ability to extend past the categories and put a little uh, more information to guide your end user on how to necessarily complete this field if they don't understand it. So for this working time, because I have three separate checkboxes here, I want my end user to know that if they select this checkbox, they could enter in specific time shifts. Something else that we've implied here is there's a rule behind each one of these checkboxes that will show or hide specific fields based on which one I choose. So if I choose one shift, I'll see one slot to enter in a from and to. If I enter in two shifts instead. Sorry about that. It displaced me. So if I enter in two shifts, I could enter in two shifts on my own. If I was to select three shifts, then I would enter in three. Because I don't have a rule right now on my time shifts, I'll keep it unselected. And then if testing, calibration, inspection, certification is the main activity of the organization, I can click this checkbox to make this checkbox disappear. Otherwise, I have this other text field in which I can enter in a different activity related to the organization instead. If I currently do hold accreditations, then I can select this and then I can enter in my accreditations below just by clicking in add. So as an end user, something interesting that I can do here is I could either export my file to Word or I could export to PDF. And I don't only have access to this as an end user on the website. I also have access to this as the internal client who receives the application. So this, these options here to print even can be placed on any single form. So I'll show you what that looks like. If I export what I currently have to Word, my download will appear. Once I double click on it, I'll see that everything that I entered in here will have indeed snapped to every single field that I've wanted it to. So here's everything that I entered in. I entered in that 
my name is interfacing, this is where I reside, and my telephone number, my email address. So everything that you've inputted into the form gets updated live. Okay, so now I'm gonna submit this form. Now what's really interesting is that I've received a notification as the person who's gonna be approving this. So I see that an application has been received for review and Marco is the one who is responsible for reviewing the application. So I'm gonna click on this. Here's the exact email. So even though it's, re it's uh, received for Marco, it's actually set up to my email address just so that I can show you a bit more easier and quicker how to access this. So basically, this is a link to the direct task. When I click on it, it's gonna bring me exactly where I need to be right after I log in. So I can access that task directly from this notification. So it's gonna append, it's gonna load. And because of that, I'm able to accept it on the fly as I'm doing other work, as I see that I'm working on something else and this notification pops up, I can click on it, it'll bring me directly to the form, I can review it instantly, and I can either reject it or submit it. If I am to reject it, then an email is gonna be sent back to the applicant informing them that their application has been rejected. So I can send back a copy of this form in its entirety with everything that's been entered in, I can extend a comment field and let them know exactly where it's been rejected and why. So I'm gonna submit this application. I'm gonna log in as Dia, who is the person that that form gets routed to. So this is the second step in the process now. Okay, so now I'm in Asdia, and here are all the different roles that I'm playing. That's why you see so many different ones. So I'm gonna go in as a process owner, and I see nominate assessor. So here's my current task. Now, in case I didn't have the time to complete this task and I wanted to delegate this task, let's say I wanna give it to somebody else in the company. So I would hit facilities, delegation management, delegate to, I would add a person that I would wanna delegate this task to. Let's say I wanna delegate it back to Marco. I would click his name here. I could delegate this task to him from a specific date because let's say I'm out of office for this week. I'll set it from the 15th and I'll tell him he has about a week to complete it. Uh, here are some folders that he can view if I want him to be able to view all of my folders or if I want him to just view um, the folder with my task. So my task was a process owner. So I would let him view my current pending tasks and then he would receive the task to review the application. Oh, something else as well. Um, if I don't want to give it specific dates, I can permanently um, assign this to him. So if I was not only away for one week, but if I was away for an extended period of time, I would say permanent and then it would remain in his inbox. It wouldn't just be from that specific date that I requested. So this is my current task and I'm the one that's gonna complete it. I'm able to see everything that was entered in again. Everything is grayed out purposely so that I myself as an internal user instead of an external customer that I can't tamper with any of the information. So the information remains locked. So this little save form that you see here is a great is a great option for when you're filling in a form and say you don't want to fill out that whole entire form in its entirety uh, from the get-go. You just sat down, you filled in the form, you realize you don't have time to finish it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna press save form and it's gonna save an instance of that form so that you can go back into it and then finish completing it at a later date. You also have this thing called history tree. What's interesting here is you're able to track the exact process history of what came before that particular task. So I know here that this was submitted by an anonymous person 
And the person responsible for reviewing it is the test manager who happened to be Mirko. I know that it took him about two minutes here to finish his task. And that it now resides in his folder named completed tasks, which is where it goes once it's once the person is done with it. The pending tasks is where it currently sits. So that's sitting in my folder and I'm the process owner and I haven't finished the task yet, which is why there's no start, there's no end date, but there's only a start date here. And something that I have to do here that if I don't do, I'll receive a notification saying that it needs to be done. So I'll show you what that looks like. If I press perform assessment, it'll tell me that a task assignee is not defined. So we put that rule to make sure that at this step, a person has to nominate an assessor to review this task. So as I go here, so this is a business rule that we've incorporated. It could be put on any single field. So I'll know here that I have to assign a team leader in order for this application to be sent through. So here is where I would send an approval email or I could send a rejection email. So something that's interesting about these buttons here is that if I click it, So you could see here that I received notification saying that the application has been approved. Now, this is a great little thing for your applicants. So the client right here, it's set to my email address so that I can show it to you, but you can grab that email address from the official form where the applicant inputted their email address. And that's actually the business rule that we've set up here. So that client would put in their email address. And then once you send the approval email, an email can get sent out to your client with the actual accreditation document. The exact application right now it's in Word form, but we can change it so that it's in PDF format. It'll contain everything that that person, myself, entered in. So they'd be able to get back their accreditation form. Oh, I did want to show you what my PDF looks like. Something else that I wanted to show you also is the other different rules that we've incorporated on a form. If you go here and you select the cab type, sometimes it could be a little bit confusing for an end user. They won't know what exactly they should fill in. All these different cab types have a selected grid, so an associated field where they can enter in more information. So if you have testing laboratory, you'll see now here, they'll know exactly what to fill in here. They'll know what type of activity to put in. If they also wanted to gain accreditation for a calibration laboratory, they can click on that. And then the calibration laboratory tab will also appear. So these are little rules to show or hide tabs that we've incorporated into this form. Something else that's really nice is we have the ability to sort based on the different values that have been entered. So now I'm in the accreditation list that incorporates all of the accreditations that have been entered into so far. So I see I filtered in by cab name. I could also filter in again by commercial name. Here I can select who it's been reviewed by. So now I just keep narrowing down more and more onto the specific accreditation that I created and that I'm searching for. This is like a library that holds all your accreditations and you're able to search and sort and filter based on the values that you've inputted. Something else that we also have is something called dashboards. We created a dashboard to show as many types as there are per application. We also have a variety of other dashboards that we can create that would also be very helpful to you. For instance, we can do a dashboard for how many accreditation applications are currently open versus how many need to be reviewed, how many are passed, how many are running right now, anything that you can envision. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you so much for your time. And let me know if you need any further clarity on anything else.